by the time the Buffy thing happened and the tin cans was happening and we were on our way to doing water and solutions, we had gone out, but, you know, we... <laughs> we tour. We we did Sepultura's last shows ever, um, on the Roots tour. Um, we did. Well, what was it like playing with Sepultura? It was I mean, insane. Everyone hated me. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, it was. I shaved myself a mohawk at the beginning of that tour. Sepultura was wonderful. And actually, just to bring it back to Phoenix, Dana, Max and Gloria's kid, no longer with us. Love, yeah. Rest in powerful peace. Um, he's the one really who turned the Sepultura crew on to us. It was sort of via Deftones, of course, but it was really Dana saying like, hey, there's this other band. And so that's the reason Sepultura took us out. It had nothing to do with labels or anyone. And it was just a really sweet time. And like a lot of heavy bands that loved us and we loved them, whether it's Deftones or Korn or Sepultura or Strife or Snapcase, we were down with the bands um, that was literally the crowds Right the crowds yeah. couldn't give a fuck about us You know Incubus too I'll add to that list No they're not super heavy But at the time They were definitely rocking the Well Science was a lot you know, heavier sort of, Than their later stuff Yeah sure. and so they were You know it's just the funk rock yeah. Like white dreadlocks Adidas totally, sweatsuit totally shit Totally the Adidas you know, thing like, Yeah Right which was <clears throat> not my fucking game at all But they were the people Who we were buddies with They were sort of fellow misfits In the rock scene at that time It, it hadn't blown up yet um, So we were all kind of misfits And then that kind of congealed Into this kind of bro -y, rock funk rock thing that i became in particular increasingly less interested in and and none of far really particularly interested in that and so we just started not fitting in so to your question by the time we got around to rock and water and solutions we were proud of ourselves as a band but it was kind of like where this has led to because We'd play to these pretty big rooms of people because we were opening for other bands, heavier bands that were that were getting pretty big, and most of the crowd would hate us, and particularly me, um, because you're not singing heavy. Yeah, because yeah. you know I could scream, but then I'd be you know crooning in between, and then especially in between, so it was really just the banter more than anything else. Because even our heaviest shit, we didn't like cut out or some shit like really heavy shit or love American style. But then after it, rather than being like, yo, what's up? Yeah. I wouldn't do that because that's never been me. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would say, hey, everybody, how you doing? And at that time, too nice it's, for it's, metal kids. it's hard to imagine now because sort of with emo and everything that came after and the way things have gone down. And even metal bands now are actually, there's much less pretense when for you sure. go and see... I don't know who's that, who's that fucking amazing mathy band. Um, I'm not going to think of them, but th there's a lot of heavy band Mastodon who I've seen now who they're totally chill between songs now. It's not some metal bands still do the yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're talking in between yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, heavy, Cookie Monster heavy thing. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's cool. Like it's fun, but it was never. I've just. It's never. It's anyone else do what they want to do. It was you just, should talk like that. Now I should. This is that, why you're saying this. That is a good idea. People will be like, "That's a good fun? idea." <laughs> no, I mean, so so yeah. So we were we were happy with ourselves. We liked the music we were making, and we were also aware that the world was not going to fall at our feet. We were just doing a kind of a misfit thing, um, and so what was happening was that there'd be a ton of people to show. Most of them would hate us but a few people would really love us and so there's a sweet little family building and we weren't selling shit for records but we had more fan-made websites at that time than bands that were way bigger than us because these really passionate nerdy misfit people yeah. exactly <laughs> would, would be the ones at the heavy shows who would stick around yeah and and that's how the family that became far's rock family and really has become my family ever since and the land i've lived in has been the land of sweet passionate nerdy people who aren't really interested in sort of the bright lights and are more interested in the intimacy of it